Yeah, I would say open source is definitely, from a central bank perspective, uh, a journey, and I think we are just at the halfway house. But if you look at it from BIS perspective, BIS is the bank of central banks, and central banks are the banks of banks. And but <laughs> a trend that we are clearly seeing is that the banks are really using uh, open source and are embracing it, and that's kind of like traveling upwards now. So yeah. central banks are using it. Even BIS is using it, so so I think think that's the journey that that we are seeing, and I think just from the perspective of being in an innovation hub, you know we we actually build most of our things at the moment in the cloud, and there's a lot of open source things uh, available, and there's no way that we could do the things that we're doing uh, without uh, having access to all these great open source tools. So so for our perspective, it's great. I do hear the concerns about security and longevity, and, and we need to figure those out. And there's also been an open tech initiative at BIS. Yes, yeah, so very briefly, so, so that's the halfway house I, I was talking about. So we, we will be sharing um, our code that comes out of the innovation hub with a, at least initially with a limited uh, number of participants. So everything is, it's a GitHub, it has governance, it has licenses. But, but to begin with, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of an invitation only. But I think basically the trajectory is that we want to go all the way and to an open source uh, platform in terms of sharing our, our outputs. Can I, yeah. can I add to that? Of course. Thanks, because um, earlier, Morton, we were talking about also open source as a path to realizing um, our mission of financial infrastructure really serving the public good. Yeah. And I think this is really important to call out because um, it's what Morton just said is huge, talking about central banks being comfortable um, with open source ethos in general really represents this huge uh, cultural shift in a traditionally conservative yeah. financial sector, right? And so I think, again, starting to understand that what we build collaboratively and transparently helps us serve our citizenry uh, more directly um, is, is really important. So again, that, that underpinning of, of uh, open source providing a path for social good, um, I think is part of what has brought about and we've started to realize this cultural shift. Mm -hmm. Not to mm -hmm. take words out of your mouth. <laughs> no, I, I agree, uh, but, but I think one has to remember the central banks are conservative, so it's this journey that I, mm -hmm. I spoke about. I think we're really about trying to move what I call the production possibility frontiers mm -hmm. uh, of central banks and by technology, and I think open source is, is the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting when you say it's sort of leveling up, uh, sort of floating up from the, the banks, the central banks, because of course, uh, I mean, our experience has been with banks that is really originally about talent and, and cost reduction, really the way they started mm -hmm. looking at, at mm -hmm. doing open source. Very much like you've seen other industries do, you know, five to 10 years ago. So not surprising that, you know, a regulated industry will take a little longer so to adopt technology trends. Um, but more and more you're seeing them really trying to drive faster innovation or uh, really uh, uh, solving long-standing challenges. And that's why we're seeing the move from uh, you know, I'm open sourcing a project to really attract talent, to really I'm embarking into an openly governed, mm -hmm. shared initiatives, which oftentimes involves regulators. That's mm -hmm. one of our big goals at Finas as well. Um, so it's interesting to see that this is actually being perceived and sort of floating up as well at, yeah. at central banks. There's a, there's, a pra there's a pragmatism to it as well. I mean, yes. the, the, yeah, the BIS report, right, of the number of central banks that are actively on the, on the journey of evaluating central bank digital currency mm -hmm. and how to yeah. get there, right, it would be incredibly dystopian if, if that was solved, you know, you know, 178, you know, diff, yep. different ways in different, you know, in terms of thinking about the modernization of our global infrastructure, that ability to have interoperability and have it all hang together, you know, that, that ability to go through that journey together around some core foundational principles and, and, you know, and, um, and governance, you yeah. know, to, you know, to make sure that it's done in a way that meets the requirements of systemically important infrastructure at scale and security and, and the like, you know, there's a pragmatic element to it of if you know even if even if this if the community of, of global central banks were split into four or five different factions that rallied around four or five different you know different vendor solutions right we'd we'd still you know there'd still be a significant effort that would be needed to to to, to weave together the global financial mm -hmm. infrastructure in its new form you know 
you know, it's just incredibly pragmatic to say, actually, why don't we just have, you know, have, have a, a, you know, a, an open source, you know, community rallying around those common standards and then allowing the central banks to obviously configure for their own needs individually, but be confident in a foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 